Yeah, we're close. We're close enough for two propositions. One is that human activities can and maybe already have started to change the global climate and that this is something that should be of concern to citizens. Regions Professor Malcolm Hughes has brought the forest to the center of the climate change stage. A dendrochronologist, or more specifically, he says, a mesoclimatologist, his climate predictions come from the trees, their rings recording environmental events over the past 3,000 years. Nice clean bark, nice sharp rings, pretty fast-grown trees. There are years, for example, when almost all of the trees in the southwest have a very small ring. So what's going to cause that? It could be random. It's conceivable if you do the math. Uh, it could be highly synchronized outbreaks of insects, and we can use tree, tree rings to study that, by the way. Uh, or the most likely culprit is climate. Tree ring data contributed to a 1998 study showing marked warming of the northern hemisphere in the late 20th century. The paper by Michael Mann, Ray Bradley, and Malcolm brought climate change and its authors to the public doorstep. Our diagram got picked up because I mean, it can look cool graphically. It also contributed to subsequent research recently acknowledged by the Nobel Physics Prize. The greenhouse effect support this proposition. So what might this mean for us? Malcolm grew up in the UK and early on had an interest in the way things worked. High school, I'm embarrassed to say I can't remember the teacher's name. He was just a tall Scotsman. He used to talk about fruits and seeds <laughs> in, in, in botany classes. No, but he actually had a good way of uh, getting us interested and excited. And in particular, in applying some very basic principles of physical science to living things. While doing forest ecology across Europe, he began a long series of collaborations with the university's tree ring lab. In 1988, he joined the lab as director and served for 12 years. Okay. The lab has nice become place. a model for evolving UA consortiums seeking to integrate all aspects of Earth systems research. As an example, the Institute for the Study of Planet Earth. Malcolm is a co-founder. We have to think in an integrated way without it being arm-waving and new agey. Uh, and that's how it is in the Earth system. And it's nailing down those couplings, those linkages, which is exciting and what we try to transmit to students. It's over 100 years old. And He's really made it possible for me to, to interact with those scientists and to be able to get out and actually present my beginning research at conferences both here in the States and abroad. So we take a year like this one, it's got a real big fat ring. His own work pushes tree ring science to deliver more precise prediction strategies, looking at new variables in biological drivers and focusing on dense chronological mapping. Because it depends where you are. That's a lot of hard work. But I think the fact that uh, he's been able to collaborate with some of the, the best people in the world and, and co-author papers, um, really landmark papers, um, that have uh, shown the way for the future. We have two duties. One is to um, try to make sure we got it as right as we can. And then the other is to let folks know. There are many loose ends, don't get me wrong. I spent some time talking to you about scientific revolutions. Uh, you don't know which is the next one. There's some alligator bark juniper around somewhere. Teaching, speaking engagements, committee work, and research take Malcolm from the Sierra Nevadas to the forests of Siberia. But he still finds time for his other loves, his wife, his daughter, his new grandchild, music, and... He's got this thing about uh, soccer, about football. Of soccer? You can call it soccer. It's all right. I don't know yeah, yeah, I, I know where I'm living. And soccer is a gentleman's game played by hooligans. <laughs> the, card, <please. laughs> the most fun part is the basic stuff with the wood and the trees and the measurement and the people involved in it. Way a bit. And talking about the science and working with the students. Uh, just beyond this one with all the exposed roots. I think it gives him a good excuse to wander around in the forest. 
and get paid for it. Hey, you Gary, where'd you get that color TV? Uh, fell off the back of a lottery. <laughs>